Welcome back to Q&A. Let's bring in our panel. Josie Pagani, Public Affairs Specialist and Director of the Council for International Development. Charles Finney, former diplomat and trade negotiator, now Government Relations Consultant at Saunders Unsworth and Lila Hare, former MP. Lila, I will start with you. How different does this sound? Does it sound better? Uh, very marginally, but there are some... The, the minister's... Um, the Minister's description of some of the changes, I think, warrants closer scrutiny. For instance, the suggestion that labour and environmental changes will now be excluded from investor state dispute settlement, ISDS, which is the process by which private companies can sue the New Zealand government for making regulatory changes is simply not the case. The uh, labour or environmental um, law changes or the application of existing laws can still be subject to ISDS. So I think that was a, a fairly misleading description of what the government has achieved with these changes. Ch Charles Finney, uh, David Parker made it clear that the ISDS thing was one they didn't quite get across the line. He says everything else has been tweaked to New Zealand's advantage. What do you think of what he's had to say? And, and, and also explain to, to ISDS what the possible impact of that could be. OK, well, look, I think what we, we have is what had been agreed when America was in the room in terms of market access maintained unchanged. And that's very good news for our exporters, particularly to Japan. Australia's got an FTA with, with uh, Japan. EU's about to have one. We would have been in serious trouble if we don't have the same access as Australia into the Japanese market. And we'll all be able to take market share away from the United States, which is a, a good thing. So I think in terms of the interests of our exporters, this is a very, very good thing. Obviously, the new government's had some concerns and they wanted to try and negotiate those into the agreement. They've had some limited success, given the amount of, um, you know, there's only been a few weeks to do this. I think the negotiators have done extremely well. And I think uh, Minister Parker can be very pleased and the Prime Minister with what they've achieved. There were problems right at the end of, of what was being talked about in Da Nang. New Zealand wasn't the cause of those problems uh, and uh, we're, we're back into a leadership role which is fantastic to see. Josie, on Friday night this was all off because of Canada and because of Vietnam. Is this mm. a bit of a Mickey Mouse thing that we've got now or was that brinkmanship we saw on Friday night? Oh, I think there was a lot of um, different things going on. Um, uh, you know, certainly Canada's in the process of, of negotiating, renegotiating NAFTA with America. They had pressure on from the state. Um, uh, you know, Vietnam is balking actually at some of the labour standards uh, and the enforcement of those labour standards, which is actually one of the really good things about TPP. Um, but I think what, lab what this Labour leadership really deserves some credit for is, is, is really um, ditching the, the sort of nativist, protectionist language around trade that, that uh, Labour under Andrew Little was promoting. And, you know, don't forget, Labour was at 23% then. So now they've, what they're doing, I think, is reframing the whole debate on trade. So it's, about, it's not just about tariff reduction. It's about what are the benefits for the many, not the few. So, you know, whether it's Labour standards, whether whether it's um, the right for unions to have access to the workplace in, place in countries like Vietnam. You know, these are the first time that these sorts of clauses have been in a trade deal. So Lila, do, do you agree managed with that? To protect a lot You're of smiling that. like you don't agree with that. Well, I think we've, we've seen a total inflation um, in the rhetoric around this agreement of the importance of these so-called labour standards. Let's remember that the labour standard provisions that are in the TPPA have been constructed by the US and in their trade agreements since 1994 with numerous countries who have during, since then violated every form of core labour right and labour standard. The US has prosecuted one case, which was against Guatemala under its um, gu the, the agreement it had with the Caribbean and Central American countries, and they lost because these standards are not strong. They are not protected. But let me let me say one thing. No, no, Greg, let me say one thing. Just, 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 just while before we go stronger than the agreements that, we've had that previous. You can't, can it, I just that finish New Zealand, here? But New Zealand, the, the you know the job of a progressive government government, a, a Labour government, is to protect the rights of New Zealand workers and to make sure that we benefit from the global food chain. You know, that the products are made all over the world, different components are, are, are made in different places. So um, it, 
you cannot protect the rights of New Zealand working people if you're not in these agreements. You, you're completely well, absent then. So well, I just want to go to the absolute, well, ba Lila, the just agreement... to go to the absolute basics. Yeah, yeah. So you're not happy okay. with this. You don't think it's any better. So that's the bottom line. Well, I right? certainly don't think the Labor standards provisions make up for any other concerns that people have with the agreement because the history of these provisions has been that they've actually had no impact in countries where they've applied. And in fact, countries have been able to undermine their own labour laws with impunity. So, what's so the I think it's an not incredibly it? naive not position. Be there? And I would go as far to say it's why would you um, window not use, dressing why would you to not use, use these standards deal? as a way of covering over other objectives. Why would you to not use a trade deal and expand its scope? Because I think it's good if trade deals cover things like environmental protection, uh, labour rights. Now, just because it's failed in the past, isn't it better that TPP has for the first First time, um, uh, 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 environmental standards about um, endangered species, uh, lifts tariffs off wind turbines, well, solar energy. Charles, can this I come to you from a, David good. Parker said he got four and a half out of five. The ISDS was one thing he was, he's not quite a hundred percent. Is that going to be enough to appease the people who were against the TPP back in 2016? Well, there are some people who I suspect are never going to be satisfied with this agreement, but if the Labour Party are going to support this, uh, we've already got National saying they'll support the deal, there's overwhelming support in Parliament, so I I'm anticipating a relatively uh, easy process in Parliament, but obviously I think there will be people who will continue to vent their opposition outside so, of Parliament. So we know about exporters to, to a degree, depending on who you ask, but who else is going to benefit from this? Who, if you're not an exporter and you're a New Zealander, how's this going to make your life any better? Well, um, the exports create jobs and better paying jobs, so the whole society uh, will be benefiting um, from this. And um, it's going to be also um, good for um, economies such as Vietnam to have the external pressure imposed upon it by the, the rules and the, and the um, uh, economic uh, impacts of those rules in, their, in terms of their reform processes, and that's long-term very good for I mean, us as well. It's not a perfect deal, but, but the point is it does incentivise... I mean, for us in New Zealand, we've already lifted all our tariffs. I mean, we, we did that years ago, decades ago, so it actually benefits benefits us to have access to some of these markets where tariffs are still there. But even more importantly, um, it, it's access for our services, it's, it, it's uh, access for um, you know, our, our ability to, to be in that global food chain, if you like, where we can sort of, uh, you know, if we're not there, I think that's the counterintuitive you have to think about. If we're not in this agreement that's covering, you know, what, 500 million yeah. consumers, <laughs> you know, if we're not there, that's incredible. That's more damaging than anything. Well, I think I think that is totally contested. Would you not be there though? We Lana? have the, the the problem here is a much, you know, looking at it from a high a higher level, looking at the overall problem. The impression is created that we're on some sort of evolutionary path towards some sort of ideal state, and that these agreements are helping us to get there. In fact. In every part of the world, there is huge questioning going on about the ideal state that we are so-called heading towards. And these agreements are very soon going to be seen as part of the past and not the future. And so, I mean, while it's disappointing, I think that Labor have decided, you know, to to cut and run and not challenge the overall direction they are at this it. point. They're reframing the, the overall whole direction is being challenged. It's being challenged at the centres of orthodoxy. But Nile, you said that like about the, the China IMF. FTA. It, well, you actually, said that you about have China no FTA. idea what I've said about the China FTA. But you did FTA. at the time publicly. Oh, you did I? It. And you're going to quote me on that? No, but were you in favour of the China FTA? Silence. Charles, <laughs> look, no, I think, I think, Charles, I think what about the political blowback for Labor? They were against large bits of it. They say to them now, but four and a half, they've got over the line, four and a half bits. Is, is there going to be a lot of people who voted for Labor, got them in, thought no, the TPP's over, and they'll go, oh, hang on, that's not, that's not what I wanted? Um, I'd be very surprised if there's huge blowback. Um, um, the... Labor Party has, for um, generations, been supportive of international trade agreements, uh, the second generation of CER, the, the um, work done on, uh, on WTO being created, um, the China Free Trade Agreement, the 
uh, Thailand Free Trade Agreement. These were all things that happened um, under Labour administrations. And we have had a bipartisan approach um, in this space for many years. I think what we're seeing right now is a re-establishment of that bipartisan. We are going Labor, to have to leave Labor it there, I'm afraid, 23% when they were being anti-TPP and anti-trade. And I think, you know, that tells you a lot.